Let us look now at the Convention People's Party of Kwame Nkrumah. So it was formed on 12th June 1949 by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Koji Botsio and K.A. Badena. So these three, after they moved out of the, the UGCC, then they formed their party known as the Convention People's Party. What were the aims of the Convention People's Party? Number one was to fight an immediate independence of Ghana. So Nkrumah uh, associated himself with all classes of people, the youth, the land, business people, school leavers, unemployed, and even villagers who were empowered to be patriotic and, liber uh, and liberate their country from the colonial rule. So he made himself to be friends of all the people. So Krumah used a famous slogan known as "Safe government now, Safe government now. So it was a slogan of the, uh, uh, the Convention People's Party. So this one, it showed a desire to have Africans rule themselves. So the policy of the Convention People's Party was even safe government now. So their major policy centered on safe government now. So this was different from the policy of the UGCC, which was uh, prepared to cooperate with the British to win safe government sometime in the future. So that was the difference to say the UGCC, it worked with the colonial government so that in the near future, they uh, become uh, the leaders or they rule themselves. But then the CPP, it was different because it emphasized to say we want that safe rule now not tomorrow not in the future like that the second factor or the second one was uh, the second aim of the uh, cpp was to foster nationalism in uh, non in a non-violent way that is positive action so kwame nkrumah was to use positive action uh, to put pressure on the colonial government to grant independence to gold coast. So the positive action refers to the use of non-violent non means like strikes, boycotts, non-operation non in order to, pu uh, to push uh, for the reforms. So that is the positive action, non-violent way of demonstrating. Africans began to boycott uh, pur uh, purchasing goods from European and uh, Lebanese shops and looted shops in 1948 and released prisoners after attacking jails. So Nkrumah hoped that positive action would compel the British to grant uh, the independence to the Gold Coast. So uh, Kwame Nkrumah was uh, doing the positive one to say uh, the positive action to say, all right, uh, since in 1948, what was happening was that people, they were rooting uh, the shops and doing many other uh, uh, bad things, attacking, uh, attacking the jails, releasing prisoners, things like those. So it was like the chaotic uh, demonstrations. So with that then, his party, uh, it uh, wanted to follow the uh, means of uh, a positive action whereby doing it in a non-violent way, doing it in a non-violent way so that uh, the British, they grant the government to the Africans. Another aim was to promote unity among the people. So the party, the CPP, wanted to unite all the classes of people for safe rule uh, to be attained. So Krumah was uh, also wanted to unite West African states to fight for safe rule. So he wanted to promote unity. Another aim of uh, the uh, CPP party of Kwame Nkrumah was to, get, uh, to let God Coast to develop its own social, economic, and political system, that is socialism. So Nkrumah uh, hoped to use socialism to improve the lives of the people in the God Coast. 
as Africans traditionally are bound by communal life uh, of type. So he wanted to uh, use socialism to say, no, uh, Africans must be united to do their own things as they are usually uh, uh, doing their thing. So this meant that the state would play a great role in laying down the economic and social reform. So uh, you, in his idea, he wanted to say, right, the government must be there to support the social reforms in different societies in the country. So let us compare between the UGCC and the CPP. The UGCC and the CPP. So the UGCC uh, was conservative and constitutional uh, in attaining safe rule. It cooperated with uh, the colonial government while the CPP was radical. It was somehow militant in forcing the colonial government to step down uh, from the from ruling God coast. And also the UGCC members were middle class people, the urban elite, uh, whereas the CPP involved all sectors of life, the ex-servicemen, poor cocoa farmers, school leavers, and educated radical and uh, uh, radicals who wanted the colonial government to change some of its policies. So there was another difference there to say the UGCC mainly complied of the educated, the way to do people, but the CPP incorporated all the people all classes of people. Another com uh, comparison uh, is that the UGCC uh, believed in attaining independence in the near future, whereas the CPP of Kwame Nkrumah believed in immediate independence. So that was another difference. The UGCC, they said, oh, in the near future, the British are going to give us the, uh, the government or safe rule. But the CPP said, no, we want that safe rule now. So, in here, we are going to look at the activities. What were the activities that, uh, that made uh, uh, the activities by Kwame Nkrumah that made him win the support of God, uh, of people in the God coast? So, number one, he established party branches countrywide. Number two, he formed youth groups in Accra and nationwide. Number three, he also promised boycotts, violence, and strikes to force the colonial government changed some of its policies. And that one is what we have called positive action. And number four, he demanded the uh, for safe government now. And number five, he stand on criticizing the colonial government uh, poor policies. So he criticized the poor policies of the colonial government. And also his demand for a constitutional review to allow Africans have a universal vote and occupy the key positions in the government. Now, let us look at uh, the reasons why the CPP attracted supporters in Gold Coast. Number one, it promised industrial development. It promised to say we are going to build Ghana. And also it promised jobs for all the people. So you see their school leavers now, they had hope. It promised free primary education and national health service. And that one, it was an advantage to all the people. It also promised equal opportunities for all the people to say everyone is going to have equal opportunity in everything. It was hope for everyone. So with that then, they attracted the support of the majority in Ghana. Now let us look at the role. What were the roles that were played by the political parties in fostering nationalism in Ghana? The political parties now, we talk of the, uh, the UGCC, the CPP, uh, uh, and other parties that were there. What role did they uh, do? Uh, what role did they play in uh, making nationalism in Ghana possible? Number one, they provide, though, by providing uh, the mass with proper leadership that guided the people to resist the colonial rule. So there was the leadership that was provided by the party to resist the colonial rule. And the parties also were acting as the mouthpiece of the masses against the oppressive colonial policies and demand uh, for safe rule. So they were like representatives, the spokespeople of uh, 
the mouthpiece is like someone speaking on behalf of the other. So they were speaking on behalf of the people against the, the colonial uh, rule. And they were also promoting solidarity among the people to resist colonialism through riots and strikes. So we see to it that they promoted unity among the people to fight against the uh, colonialism. Reaction. What was the reaction of the colonial government to the uh, nationalist movements in Ghana? Number one, Pruma uh, called for a nonviolent campaign called the, uh, uh, the Positive Action, a campaign based on Mahatma Gandhi that was in India. We are going to meet him again in Form 4. Uh, well, that's when we are going to talk much about Mahatma Gandhi and his uh, positive uh, action. So the positive action involved boycotts, strikes, non-violent demonstrations. So the campaign was to force the British government to grant the safe rule to Ghana. So in January 1950, Nkrumah called for a countrywide uh, strikes and boycotts, although the government had banned the strikes. So most public services, such as buses, railways, stopped, stopped functioning. So the demonstrations, they tend violent, are characterized by looting and death of people. So that's the diff uh, that is the problem with the, the African demonstrations. Usually, uh, they tend out to be violent. Uh, there was the other year when uh, the, the Eshara DC in Malawi, the human rights uh, organization, it uh, organized the, uh, the demonstrations to say no, after the votes, uh, they, they were not uh, okay, then eh, they said no, let us show our voice that we are not happy, uh, let us demonstrate. Then those demonstrations were about rooting, then the people were stealing uh, uh, from the shops in terms like that. So uh, it was like that. And even people lost their lives. Many people lost their lives like that. Why? Because uh, while the Asia DC had the good aim, but then the people themselves, others, they had different motives, then they started rooting. They started uh, they started uh, stealing things from other people. So that one is the uh, 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 what is not positive action. So positive action sometimes it tends to be uh, bad. So it turned violent in 1950, even in Ghana. So in reaction to the violence, the colonial government declared a state of emergency on 20th July 1950 to say, no, 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 no. This one now, uh, things are out of hand. So Krumah and other uh, CPP leaders, they were arrested. Krumah was arrested on the charges of sedition, that is causing commotion, causing uh, riots, causing commotion or disturbance, and organizing unlawful strike, because strikes were, uh, were banned. So he organized the strike, so he was arrested for the banned action, and also for sedition. Sedition is causing uh, disturbance or commotion, uh, disturbing peace. So in addition, uh, the Accra Evening News was also banned. So when we say a state of emergency is a situation which a government is empowered to form actions that it would normally not be permitted. So it can be declared during a disaster, civil unrest or armed conflict. So uh, usually we have ever heard in our country the president declaring the state of emergency during the disasters, maybe in the lower Shire or during the floods that affect maybe different parts of the country. And again, however, later the British sent a lawyer, I Ken Watson, to be chairman of the Commission of Inquiry on the causes of the violence. So the commission was uh, formed, which was formed, was called the uh, Watson Commission because it was chaired by Iken Watson. Let's look at the Watson Commission. So it was formed in 1949. It was formed in 1949 and the chairman uh, of the commission was Iken Watson. So why was it formed? To find out, to find out the uh, causes of the 1948 violence, because we have said that Kwame Nkrumah 
when he was forming his party in 1949, it was basing again on the what happened on the rights, the satisfaction of the people, whereby they were rooting the shops and the like. So uh, there then, that's when he came up with the positive action to say we are going to strike to demonstrate but in a positive way and not what happened in 1949. So there was that positive action formed by Kwame Nkrumah. But even his, in 1940, in 1950, his positive action tend again to be violent. But this Watson Commission, it was formed in 1950 to find out what happened, what were the causes of the violence in 1948. What were the findings of the Watson Commission? Number one, Watson Commission found out that uh, education, educated Africans were irritated by being sidelined in the administration of the country, their country. So they found out that those educated Africans, they were not happy to be put on the bench, to be put aside in the running of the uh, country. And also educated people felt that the chiefs should not have political roles. Most people saw chiefs as instruments of the British uh, policy. So people, uh, it also found out the Watson Commission established to say no, uh, people were not happy to see the chiefs being used by the British government as instruments of their policies. And also, uh, the Watson Commission established that the Barnes Constitution did not satisfy the needs of the people of the Gold Coast. So it also established that the, this Barnes Commission, it was not due uh, to the effect or to the liking of many Africans. And what were the recommendations of the Watson Commission? It recommended that the colony, that is God Coast, be given a responsible government to say where uh, the parliament has passed the laws, those laws must be taken into effect. So this meant that the government had to be accountable uh, to their own voters, not to the governor. Just as we mentioned earlier on to say that some it happened that when the governor, uh, when the parliament has passed the laws, then the governor could reject those ones. So uh, uh, the Watson Commission recommended that no, it should be a responsible government. If the law passes in parliament, it goes nowhere, it passes, then it is a law like that. So it also recommended uh, an increase in African representation in the executive uh, council. So African representation was supposed to be in majority and highly involved in formulating the government policies and be responsible to the legislator. So uh, it is recommended that majority of Africans must be there in the executive council that assisted the governor. So the Watson Commission reported, uh, report uh, was accepted by the colonial office in London. However, the British government appointed another commission to implement uh, the recommendations of the Watson Commission. So the new commission was headed by an African lawyer by the name Sir Henley Cozy. Sir Henley Cozy. So the commission was known as the Cozy Commission. Now, remember that. We mentioned uh, about the Cozy Commission. Do you remember anything on that? We mentioned that Kwame Nkrumah get, get off from the UGCC because he was not incorporated in, the, in that uh, Co uh, cause a commission. So with that, then uh, he did not he did not uh, want to be uh, part of the UGCC. The cause a commission. So this was a commission made up of 38. Remember, 38 African members. So Kwame Nkrumah was not included in this one. So chaired by Sir uh, Sir Henry Cause. So. The members of the COSE Commission included chiefs, leaders of the UGCC, and other people. So Krumah said was not invited to be part of this commission. Hence, he moved out of the UGCC. What were the recommendations of the COSE Commission? It recommended that the Legislative Council should be enlarged or should be increased. And number two, Africans of the Legislative Council were to be elected, not nominated, not nominated, as was the case with the Barnes Constitution. So the Executive Council be turned into a kind of uh, cabinet that is responsible for
for the legislator. So that is number three to say that uh, the executive council, it was to be turned into a cabinet and that was responsible for the legislator. And also uh, the executive council should be, uh, should have an African majority, the executive council, like the cabinet of ministers should have majority of Africans. And also the governor was to have the final say on all important decisions. The governor was to have the final say on all important decisions. So these were the recommendations, the recommendations of the uh, COSE Commission, the COSE Commission. The report of the COSE Commission was accepted by the British government. As a result, a new constitution was drawn up for the Gold Coast. So the following, uh, following the new constitution, the first elections were held in Ghana in, in which the CPP won many seats. So after the COSE Commission and the British government accepted, then the new constitution was made following the COSE Commission. Then uh, the elections were held, then the CPP of Kwame Nkrumah, it won many seats in the Legislative Council. So the CPP became the largest party in the legislature, that is parliament, and could form a government to say now it was the ruling party because it had majority of the representation in the, uh, in the parliament. So Nkrumah, who by then was in prison, was released and became the prime minister of the government. However, the British governor still had the final authority. So uh, Kwame Nkrumah, because his party emerged to be the winner or the majority, then they, uh, he was released in prison. Then uh, he was given the position of prime minister. But remember, the, the British governor still was there and Kwame Nkrumah was just the, uh, the prime minister. So the British governor still had the final authority, the final say. To this point, let us look at the independence of Ghana, uh, how Ghana got its independence. So Nkrumah pressurized, Nkrumah pressurized the British government to produce another constitution that would give complete power to Africans. So in 1954, a new constitution was drawn up for the God Coast after the pressure from uh, Kwame Nkrumah, who by then was the prime minister. Now, let us look at the changes introduced by the 1954 constitution. Number one was that the executive council should comprise Africans only, the cabinet ministers, only Africans. The constitution, 1954 constitution. Number two, uh, all members of the legislative council were to be directly elected, to be uh, uh, voted into the office like we do with the MPs, not to be appointed. MPs to be elected, to be uh, voted. As a result of the new constitution, elections were held in September 1954. So the CPP won 71 out of 104 seats in the parliament there. So the parties that opposed the CPP during the elections were the National Liberation Movement, NLM, with its supporters drawn from the Ashanti region whose people they did not like to come under the authority of people from the coastal region like Kwame Nkrumah after independence. Sometimes the uh, regionalism uh, plays a part in the, uh, in the politics. Sometimes you find that like our example in Malawi, you find that some people they don't like to have the, uh, in their feelings uh, it is like they are dem demeaned, they are reduced to have a president like from the north or maybe a president from the south or a president from the center. They feel like a president should only come from their, their region like that. So that one, sometimes in politics, it doesn't, it, it just produces uh, 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 demonstrations and uh, bad feelings on the people. So these people, therefore, that is the Ashanti. Uh, they favored federal form of government with the hope that it would give them some powers over the government of their state to say, all right, let us just follow the uh, federal government.
to say each and every region should have a governor, a governor, and uh, they are all represented. So the uh, first part we looked at is uh, the National Liberation Movement, NLM, that competed with uh, the CPP during elections. Another part was uh, the Northern People's Party. Uh, the other one was Togoland uh, Congress, the Togoland Congress. So there were those parties that were there also. So the British insisted that elections uh, be held again to determine or to determine a popular party in Ghana. So the CPP uh, won this election again in 1956. So on 6th July 1957, Gold Coast then became independent and took the name Ghana. So Nkrumah became the head of government and governor and became the head of the state, uh, and the governor became the head of the state. Ghana then became a republic in 1960, and Krumah became the uh, first president of Ghana. So the last British governor of Ghana was Sir Charles Aden Clark. Sir Aden Clark, Sir Charles Aden Clark was the last British governor there. So in here, we have seen how Ghana uh, got its uh, independence or the process to its independence from 1917 when there was that formation of the Western African Congress they started uh, pushing for changes in 1940 45 uh, all those things up to 1960 we see to it that uh, Ghana uh, now uh, becomes uh, a republic or in 1957 it became independent in 1957 but it became a republic in 1960. So it was the first country to be independent in Africa, just as we have mentioned. So you can see to it here that the process of independence is not just an easy thing. It is a process, a very long, long, long process as it is. Sometimes we feel like we need change now, but that change, it takes uh, the process, it takes some some process to be mature enough. Contributions of Ghana's independence to Africa. Number one, the independence of Ghana was an inspiration for national movements in other African countries. So we are looking at the contributions. What has Ghana contributed? Uh, the independence of Ghana contributed to Africa. So we are saying number one, independence of Ghana was an inspiration for national movements in other African countries. Also, Kwame Nkrumah encouraged nationalism in Africa, so he preached for a struggle against independence and against underdevelopment. Also, the independence of Ghana encouraged other European countries to speed up uh, decolonization. So when Ghana uh, became independence, independent, then other European countries that were also having colonies they were also speeding up to say no we need to give independence to the african countries to rule themselves so we see to it that it was so vital uh, to a uh, had contributions as well the independence of ghana it was not just to no avail it had contributions to other african countries so uh, other countries were inspired again to fight for their nationalism or to fight for their independence so to this far, we have come to the end of this uh, work or this uh, topic that is we are looking at uh, nationalistic and independence movements in Africa. So we are looking at Ghana. We started looking at Ghana. So with that, uh, we have looked at a lot. We have looked at the process on how Ghana uh, got its independence in 1957 and became a republic in 1960. So we see to it that uh, Ghana now became independent and uh, other African countries they uh, later followed. So here with me is a work just as usual as we do it is the work. This is the most important part now that you cannot skip just uh, moving forward. No, no, no. You can speed, speed moving forward, but uh, you have to check yourself to say, am I following the things that I am learning? So I hope uh, you had a wonderful time following through the lesson. But this time around, you have to pause a little bit and copy these questions 
and answer them in a separate piece of paper whereby you, uh, you write using your best handwriting, take a photo and send it to me so that I mark. So you send uh, to this number that is here on WhatsApp and the uh, email address that is also here, just waiting for your responses. I'll also be giving you responses on whatever. Sometimes you have the questions, it is also the same route that you use, you ask your questions on the same. So this is uh, the way uh, for you to uh, benefit because we now interact one on one. The moment that uh, the fact that you have had this DVD uh, alone, it doesn't, it's not complete without you interacting uh, with me. You have still to interact with me so that I guide you now and again until you enter into the examination room. Just as I said in the beginning, uh, this uh, is uh, the way uh, to assist you. Repeat, repeat, repeat and again until you master all these things. Because while you are in form two, you are supposed to know these things. These things are not known when someone is in college. No, when someone is married, now he is working. No, it's the time when you are young, you are in form two. Your brain is sharp. Nothing is hard. You can do it even now and master everything. Write everything clearly during exam and pass your exam. You go to the next level uh, peacefully. So, Please make sure you do these things. Don't skip. Nothing is very hard. No, it is there for you. This is the only time to enjoy, uh, to enjoy and finish your education while you are still young. So master everything. Master everything. There is nothing uh, uh, to forbid you. So with the technology uh, that is there, uh, please use that technology to the advancement or to your own benefit. We know there are so many social medias, social things that uh, attract us. There are so many things that need our attention. Uh, there's football, there's whatever, there's whatever. Many things they need our attention, but all we have to realize is that we are students, we are in Form 2, we have to know these things while we are in Form 2. So the time that is set aside for us to know these things is now. Because if we talk of football, it shall be there even when we finish after college, after even when we grow old, football will be there as well. So uh, let us not rush into other things before we finish the first things first. So let's do one step at a time. One step at a time. You find that these things will, do the, uh, will be to your own benefit. Use the screen at home to the benefit of your own. Because the movies that you are going to, uh, to watch, you are going just to follow the story, off it goes. Uh, then another movie like that. Ah, this, this one, uh, a season like that. No, no, this is the season for you while you are in Form 2, while you are in school. These are the seasons now. There is the seasons for agriculture, seasons for mathematics, seasons for uh, history, seasons for chemistry. So follow these seasons. These are the seasons for a student. You don't, don't be taken up with it or other things. So grab the screen to your own to say, no, this is screen now is for me now uh, to learn. Do that one. If it is the computer, grab the computer for you now. If it is the tablet, use the tablet for you and watch these seasons now and again. Where you don't understand, uh, repeat, repeat and again. Where you don't understand further, go and carry the question to the teacher who will assist you. Or the number is there for you uh, just to uh, to ask, to say, ah, you said this, this, this. What about this? I learned this, this. That is the way to interact. So use everything to your own advantage while you are in form two because there's nothing more uh, you could do than to repeat these things now and again so in the next lesson we are going still to continue with nationalism and independence movements in malawi so we are still in africa we have looked west africa but we will come back to malawi how did malawi attend independence so this is very important because you don't know you were just born in the 2000s so malawi uh, got independence some time way back even myself i was not there i also learned it from two i mastered it hard and i'm able uh, to tell you now so next time 
I shall be telling you how Malawi, I was not there, but I'll tell you how Malawi attained independence. So it's a wonderful, wonderful topic because it is talking about our own Malawi. So just as it is, uh, sometimes you can say, why learned, uh, learning about Ghana? It's good to know about other people because we also learn from others. So after learning from others, learn again from yourself. So we are going to learn about Malawi. So the next uh, uh, topic is about this one. But you know what? This topic again is already there on DVD. The topic is already there on DVD. So all you can do is to press that order to say, right? I'm done with the uh, independence in Ghana. Send me independence in Maui. Then immediately I'm sending you the DVD and you are going to enjoy it at the home comfort. So until next time, thank you so much.